Monsieur Poirot. And that is everything I have discovered so far. We progress, mademoiselle. Now, let us see what we can learn. The timetable is very complete now. Oh, yes, it is essential to the understanding of the crime. Study it carefully. We have many alibis we can use to eliminate suspects. Yes, too many. Compare them all. Look for discrepancies. We must be certain that they do not leak the water. I believe I have collected all the passports. Très bien, mademoiselle. You have done well. I think I have secured all the fingerprints. Très bien, mademoiselle. You have done well. Madame Hubbard heard a woman in Monsieur Ratchet's room. Wait. Oui. And about the time you heard the noise and saw the woman in the scarlet kimono. So, does a woman speak to Monsieur Ratchet? Murder him? Drop a handkerchief with the letter H? Then scurry off down the corridor in a scarlet kimono? Or does Madame Hubbard hallucinate a woman's voice as well as the man in her room? The valet masterman says Ratchet took less than his normal sleeping draft. So, instead of a comatose Ratchet who would not struggle when the knife began its work, we have a Ratchet who might cry out. But after the cry, I heard Ratchet tell Michelle that there was nothing wrong. Monsieur McQueen saw the woman in the scarlet kimono. But not enough to identify her. And he says he saw Michelle coming from the direction of the salon car. Or at least someone in an attendant's uniform. Colonel Arbuthnot saw the attendant and thinks he caught the scent of a woman. Ah, the scent of a woman. You have found a romantic streak I would not have suspected one so stolid to possess. Hildegard Schmidt saw an attendant leaving a compartment. Oui, one of the middle rooms. Either Ratchet's or Madame Hubbard's. And his description? No, it is not Pierre Michel, this small dark man with a moustache who speaks in the high voice. No, but he matches the description Ratchet gave Hartman of his enemy. Both Madame Hubbard and Mademoiselle Olsen confirm the connecting door was locked. An attendant's pass key opens even connecting doors, I think, so I am not so baffled by that locked door. Colonel Arbuthnot saw Monsieur Hartman watching the corridor from his room. Monsieur Hartman's door opens to the right, so unfortunately he could see little of the corridor, but he would have seen if anyone entered the Calais coach from the Athens Paris coach. The steak knife I found by the cliff was clean. No blood or fingerprints. Mm, it is a nuisance, that knife. On the face of it, it is of no importance. And yet, someone has taken the trouble to try and fling it over a cliff. Hartman's actions were very suspicious. And the key he discovers in Michel's clothing that opens the door to the security room in the baggage car is suspicious as well. McQueen is the son of the district attorney involved in the Armstrong case. Uh, uh, pardon, district attorney? What is that? Some sort of police official, I believe. Princess Dragomirov was Sonia Armstrong's godmother. Oui, it is coincidence. Or something more? Merci, mademoiselle. Unfortunately, the report is... We are now armed with much more additional knowledge than the first time you made the interrogations of our fellow passengers. So please speak with them again. Ask the questions subtle or intended to incite, but we must learn more. Also, the Calais coach has become very still. I think most of them are occupied elsewhere. I would suggest taking this opportunity to make any searches of the belongings you were unable to do earlier. And do not forget the baggage car or the Athens-Paris coach. <laughs> 